Good evening. This is Ayana from Cloud Prop Home Department in Lakden. Thank you very much for joining today. We are very happy to have a chance to talk about our technology, which we don't often disclose. We are one of the biggest e-commerce companies in Japan and have been integrating infrastructure globally. Tonight, we will share our experiences on producing a large-scale cloud platform. Let's go through the agenda together. Okay, here. Okay, first, we will explain our services and organization. Then four engineers from different teams will share what they are doing, how to produce our own cloud, how to make cloud native CHD services. And after a short break, we will talk about our support system for internal customers and our big data platform as well. I hope you will enjoy all the talks. After that, we will have a panel discussion based on your comments and questions. So while you are listening to our presentations, please input your comment and question in a system slider. Let me share the link to the slider. Please access the link. Then you can come to this kind of screen. You can input question like this anonymously on the click send to post. So please don't hesitate to ask any small questions. We will try our best to answer any questions. But unfortunately, time is limited. So if you find a good question, please click like, like this. If you can, please try now. And then we will take from the most popular one. Okay, thank you very much. Then let's move on to the first presentation by Adrian. Okay, Adrian, uh, please go ahead. His talk is about Lactin services and infrastructure team. Okay, can you see my slides? Yes. Okay, hello, my name is Adrian. Uh, thank you for joining our meetup today. So I'm going to go to the next slide. So um, I work in general management office in the cloud platform department called CPD. CPD is a department where infrastructure engineers support various services at Rock 10. Um, so actually I'm not an engineer, but I'm a member of the admin group and support admin tasks like department events, info sharing, hiring, HR assistant, and name a few. So now I'm going to give you a short introduction of Rock 10 grouping and CPD. Firstly, I will explain Rock 10 grouping. So hopefully everyone knows something about Rockton and have used our services. Rockton provides various services and has a following mission and corporate philosophy, empowering people and society through innovation. In developing our many services, we are committed to providing high level services to our users and business partners to help people grow thereby, thereby transforming and reaching the size. And also we will keep growing based on the vision of global innovation company. So the company was founded in 1997, uh, when it was said people do not buy things on the internet. Established the internet shopping mall, right in Ichiba, based on concept to make it easy for everyone to open stores, even if the stores were small in local areas, or even people were unfamiliar with computers. So they started with six employees, one, one server, 13 shops, and gross merchandise sales in the first month was 320,000 yen. So this year we provide, we're proud to celebrate our 25th anniversary. So as you can see in the figure, we now provide a variety of services, which is over 70 services. The number of members has reached more than a billion. Uh, we're trying to improve their convenience by linking more, more than 70 services based on Rakuten ID. So this diagram is called the Rakuten ecosystem. The cross use rate, the, the rate that, which has customers using more than two services within a year is 74.3. And this marks that we have very active users. This is because we strengthen the cooperation between services. So even the, the number of services increases, customers can enjoy most services with only using one Rakuten ID and they can earn or spend Rakuten points when they shop or use the services. Most of the infrastructure supporting Rakuten ecosystem is by cloud platform department, CPD. 
Now let's move on to CPD Cloud Platform Department. Our mission is be the cloud infrastructure for all Rakuten businesses. Currently, Rakuten operates the services through both private cloud, which we provide, and public cloud. We have the mission that we will grow and to support all Rakuten services. Our target vision is build the best cloud on the planet for accelerating Rakuten ecosystem. So our department has branches in Japan, India, Europe, USA, and consists of 350 employees who are hired directly from Rakuten and another 150 support members, which means CPD total member is around 500. We have various nationalities and backgrounds communicating in English at work. To help you grasp our work scale, I will explain the infrastructure and platform environment. We support the infrastructure utilizing four data centers in, the, in Japan, three data centers in USA, and two data centers in EU. It is also part of our work to construct and operate backbone network, which consists of the nine data centers. The number of VM we provide is 45,000. Container, we provide 40,000 managed by Kubernetes. Uh, as for CPU, we provide 120,000 cores and petabytes of storage, and we handle the server management and services support. For more information about our work, let's see the next slide. So this is the overall image of our work. CPD covers the work from data center to user support and is divided into each section which specialize in their fields. So let me explain each section from the lower layer. The first is data center section and IP transport section. The main task is at the data center section which manage nine data centers which I mentioned in the previous slide. IP transport section integrate and automate the networks in the global infrastructure platform at Rakuten. Next is a core infrastructure section. In this section, we develop and based on the network devices in the data center. Next, data storage and processing section support big data, databases, storage services, with highly scalable and durable setups. They provide the environment which enables the vast diverse data made by various Rakuten services every day to store, manage, utilize. Next to support is each to support each Rakuten service is application platform section, which is in charge of building stable operation, operation improvement and automation of the in-house cloud, Kubernetes, load balancer, service mesh, or monitoring system, et cetera. And lastly, but not least is cloud user support section, which supports our service to provide for the internal users at the front line. So that's the end of my presentation. Uh, thank you for listening. So back to you, Ayala san Thank you very much. Okay, let's move on to the next presenter, Andrew. Hello. Yes, hello. So, go ahead. I'll start so he this. is a vice senior manager of core infrastructure section. He will talk about how we define our own crowd. When you're ready, please start. Can you see my screen? Yes. So about me, um, so I've been working in this industry for 20 years. My name is Andrew Hajanikidis. Um, I've seen a lot of change and I've also made a lot of change over the, over the years. Uh, currently working at Rakuten's Cloud Platform Department um, as the section's uh, Vice Senior Manager. I started at Rakuten in 2018 as a architect in the Cloud Platform Department. Uh, under the network group. And now I'm working away as a senior, as a vice senior manager, and I specialize in uh, pipeline, automation, infrastructure, networking, security, and much, much more. So anything that's physical, I'm more than happy to discuss with you. So today I'm going to go over some of our key infrastructure, uh, what it is and how it is, uh, a bit about our cloud uh, platform and also our current potential future efforts. So we're here, we're in the middle instance. We, we provide uh, a lot of little tiny bricks, you can say, that uh, form and define our cloud platform. And you need a lot of these uh, to actually build things up. And from there, you can have your containers, your hypervisors and your other services um, and then on top of that, you can run your projects and uh, scale out to the internet. So I'm just going to share with some of you our hardware that we use, uh, and they're just regular hardware that we can 
uh, purchased from many different vendors out there on the internet. Uh, we're using Quanta. So this is one of them that we're using, which is um, a sled server with uh, eight uh, sleds in it. Each one's got about uh, 32 gigs of RAM. They, they're quite powerful little tiny machines and you can scale quite considerably uh, with these machines. They, they, they look, they don't look that powerful, but they do pack a punch. Um, and take a little bit more deep, close look at one of them. So uh, it, it, it's very tiny when you consider it. Um, one of these is probably more powerful than most people's home PCs, um, except if, of course, if they've designed it well enough for gaming. Um, there's qu quite a considerable amount of power here. So it's got eight lanes of a PCI bus. Uh, it's using NVMe for the storage, um, Intel CPUs, uh, all the good stuff. And we have a lot of these. Uh, these are like our minions and you, you need them uh, to drive power. Then we've got more interesting fun servers. These are like our, uh, these are things that you use for AI and uh, machine learning. So these big boys here have, uh, <laughs> two times 32 core Intel uh, CPUs and a lot of RAM, two terabytes to be quite frank, uh, and not one GPU card, but eight of them. And we have these all working together on a new neur neural networks, uh, on the Infinity Band network, and they all talk together quite uh, nicely. And you can scale out and scale up with these. So we're defining the different types of bricks and foundations for our cloud here. Uh, these big ones here will do a lot of machine learning, um, but we can also scale down into much smaller uh, AI instances for um, uh, systems and so on. And this is how they look like on the inside. It doesn't look like much, but if you like me and you like hardware, uh, this, this is quite a lot of fun uh, tech here. So you've got your eight GPUs here on the side, and uh, the NV switch here is the NV link, which allows you to actually scale these out using InfiniBand and having all the GPUs actually talking together. So this is all the cool stuff that we get to play with uh, in our section. And then we define that, and then we have all these different software stacks working together on top of our hardware. Um, so for us, we've got a lot of things with bare metal with Chef and Mass. Uh, networking, we drive with Cumulus, uh, which we're very happy in using with. And we have all the layers which stack on top, which I'm sure the other presenters will discuss more about tonight. Uh, we have nine data centers out there in the world and providing over 30,000 servers globally um, in the US, EU and Japan regions. Um, we provide such services on a 24 seven scale and provide it to all our many different businesses. And we provide load balancing services, container services, database services and storage services, monitoring for all these systems running on our bare metal hardware. So what's coming up? Well, we have a whole lot of extension to our self-service network. So people can go in and click and define their own network, uh, providing more GPU resources, a platform. So users can come in and uh, use a machine and build neural networks uh, without having to uh, raise a support ticket. Uh, efficiency in DC resources. So we're looking at OCP, all cool stuff there. Uh, a lot of physical equipment selection. So um, a lot of really cool new hardware uh, will be coming in and uh, network CICD automation and upgrade. So defining networks with pipelines versus uh, operations. So having a pipeline drive, operate and run your network rather than a person having to log in and do it for you. Also, we have built a fully fledged integrated private cloud uh, to support the Rakuten ecosystem and also simplify core infrastructure. So a lot of the time with infra is 
it can get overly complicated very simply. And when you scale up and out, it can uh, drive people uh, a little bit uh, overwhelming. So we, we try and simplify it. And when you can simplify uh, such infrastructure down to a mechanism that is a cookie cutter, uh, you can actually scale out even further than where you were before. And of course, further multi-tenant support. And uh, we are not only using, we're not only just in Japan, but we're also overseas, as I mentioned in the previous slide. So uh, we have a couple of data centers in Europe and a couple in America as well. And what we want to get to at the end of the day with all this infra is we want to manage this from one dashboard. So the dashboard's coming along at the moment and we have a lot of different things moving along there uh, from all the different sections in CPD uh, that will actually provide uh, this for our customers and for our internal businesses. Uh, but managing the life cycle of a system from one dashboard is, if you like me and you've been in this industry for a while, it's actually quite cool and quite amazing. And that's it from me, Ayana-san, back to you. Thank you very much, Andrew. Okay, next presented, next presenter is Takeshi, Application Architect, CRCD Platform Group. He will be talking about making cloud-native CRCD services. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, please go ahead. Hey, my name is Takeshi Takizawa. I'll present making cloud native CCD services. About me. So my name is Takeshi Takizawa. Please call me Taki. And my organization is application platform section CCD platform group. So our group mainly support CICD related services. And uh, I joined Lacten at 2010. When I joined Lacten, our main language was Japanese. So one day, Miki said, our main language changed from Japanese to English. Yeah, we are very surprised. And uh, that is one of the biggest change in my life. Now I enjoy current environment. So next, today's contents. I'll explain what is cloud native firstly, and then our system architecture diagram, how large are our services, current issues, and future plans. So what is cloud native? So cloud native means utilize cloud native technologies. For example, container, service mesh, microservice, immutable infrastructure, declarative API, and so on. Why? We should use cloud native technologies. The essential part is last part. They are engineers to make high impact changes frequently and predictably with minimal toil. Yeah, engineer's mission is providing value to a customer. So we don't want to waste our time other than development. For example, your application running on a, only one VM. If the VM is down, your service also down. You need to take care of the issue. It is extra time. If you deploy your application to the Kubernetes, then even though one of the nodes is down, Kubernetes has an auto heal feature, so you don't have to care the issue. This is cloud native. And the private cloud part, now we are making our Lactin own private cloud called One Cloud. And the robust automation part is scope of our group. 
run scalable applications is managed by container platform group. Yeah. They are managing our private Kubernetes platform. So these are responsibility. And next, system architecture diagrams. Of course, there are more and more services. This time, I focus on the container platform and the CICD platform. There are multiple Kubernetes clusters in a region, usually dev cluster and the prod cluster. And there is one Jenkins cluster in a region, have a cluster also, one cluster in a region, like this. And in order to use resource efficiently, each service use multi-tenant approach. I don't say multi-tenant is better than providing cluster per tenant. It's case by case. Just to currently, we choose multi-tenant approach since there are some size of the services. For example, some service only need a few resources. If we provision cluster per service, sometimes it's too much. Anyhow, yeah, right now, our approach is multi-tenant. And the use case, tenant build their application on the Jenkins and push read image, Docker image to the harbor. Harbor is a container registry. And deploy their application from Jenkins to Kubernetes. Kubernetes pull image from harbor. And due to some historical reason, uh, Jenkins and Harbor are outside the Kubernetes cluster. Right now, they are running on physical machine directory. And next, how large are our services? I choose one of the largest, largest region, Japan East regions scales. For example, Kubernetes. As I said, there are multiple clusters, dev and deployed. Dev cluster has 350 nodes and 7,500 bots. Production cluster has more nodes, 900 nodes, 15,000 bots are running on the master cloud cluster. Jenkins, there are 8,400 jobs and 2,000 bits per day. However, Docker image container or image registry, there is 14,000 14, projects and 260,000 images are there. Yeah, like this. I think this is very large scale. Current issue, yeah, compared to Kubernetes and Harbor, Jenkins is a bit legacy tool and is close to its performance limit in its current architecture. For example, agent nodes are provisioned statically as I said, Jink is provisioned on physical machine, so it's hard to scale out. Early morning or midnight time, most of agents are idle. So build queue is empty, but the business hour, many tenants use the Jenkins heavily. So sometimes the length of the queue can be a uh, long. 
and the tenant need to wait some time until some of the agent become ready. Next issue is controller node is single point of failure. This is Jenkins itself the architecture issue. So if controller node is down, then even though agent nodes are healthy, it cannot handle any jobs. So this is the current our CICD servers issue. So we should make our CICD services also cloud native. The solution is dynamically provision CICD tools for each tenant on Kubernetes. Yeah, right now, some issues the very beginning we start to provision one cloud is already uh, already fixed. So now we can deploy our CSAD tools to the Kubernetes. Then we should deploy to achieve, to make our service more robust, scalable. And uh, of course, there is some Kubernetes native CICD tool also. So now we are evaluating other tool also. For example, Tecton. There are more challenges. For example, release must be operated from a corresponding Jenkins which is inconvenient. Hava doesn't have geo redundancy yet. It means, as I said, Jenkins and Hava are exist in each region. So if tenant want to deploy their application to JPE2 region, they need to use this regional Jenkins, JP2 Jenkins. If they want to deploy application to EU also, then they need to use EU Jenkins, US also. So at least they need to click three times. Yeah, we should support some continuous deployment sub service. And how about case? Geo redundancy means if JP2 Hava is down, then JP2 Kubernetes cannot pull image. So it's not good since Kubernetes is healthy. So we should support some geo redundant domain means even though one of the Harbor cluster is down, tenant can pull image from next nearest place. For example, JP Harbor is down, then pull from EU Harbor. That kind of feature now we are developing. Yeah, like this, there's many, many challenges. Still, there is many, many challenges. And the experience of re-architecting our CSD platform is very rewarding, I think. So if you also think it is very fantastic, then please apply to CSD platform. Thank you. I will back to Ayana-san. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, actually, your all your presentations are a bit shorter than plan. <laughs> we have maybe more time to uh, have a break. Uh, Neville, can I ask you to have a presentation before the break? Yes, sure. 
Ah, thank you very much. So Mine then, will be maybe longer, so I can catch up the time. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And let's have your presentation. Then after that, let's have a break. Sure. And later, maybe we will have a longer panel uh, discussion than planned. Okay, then DevOps, DevOps engineer, technical account management group, and she will be talking about supporting internal customers as technical account managers. Please go ahead. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay, so uh, first I will introduce myself. I'm Nawai Goksai, and I'm working in technical account management group. I graduated in 2013 and between 2014 and 2020, I worked as system administrator and SRE. And in 2020, I started working in Rakuten Group and uh, I'm currently working in TAM Group. My main responsibilities are supporting Rakuten Mobile and Rakuten Net Platform. So today I will talk about uh, what is TAM, Technical Account Management, uh, what is Rakuten Group's CP uh, departments, Tom doing and like organization, how we are working, what are we facing and what is our responsibilities and what to expect when you are working as a Tom. So first of all, what is technical account management? Uh, Tom is the point of contact for the public cloud. So for example, if a customer wants to deploy an application on public cloud, they contact first with the TAM. And TAM understands the product uh, that will be deployed, like what is the customer need. And then they provide their, uh, they explain their product and they try to give the best solution for their customer. So requirements are knowing your products as a cloud platform, a cloud supporter and not having experience and understanding in infrastructure is important. So when you face different kinds of products that wants to be deployed, you need to provide the best solution to your customer as time. And understanding the customer needs is important because you can have multiple products that you can provide, but you need to match the need of the customer and having good communication skills in order to understand each other with uh, customer is very vital for the TAM. So about CPD TAM organization, in 2019, we had two different groups. One was supporting Rakuten Ichiba and related services, and one was support, uh, supporting ID, Point, FinTech, and et cetera, uh, different services. And in 2000, uh, during 2019, we were only focused on supporting VM infrastructure as a service uh, support. In 2020, we merged those groups into one as site reliability engineering group. And in 2021, we uh, changed this group into technical account management group. And our responsibilities also changed, not only supporting uh, infrastructure as a service, but also we started supporting the private cloud sub, uh, provided by CPD. Also, we support entire Rakuten group, not only Japan, but also US, uh, Europe and India. And we are the point of contact for all CPD products. So what is difference, like how we are working? We are the point, as I said, we are point of contact for CPD products. And the uh, plus to the previous uh, explanation about them, we provide operation for the services as well. So for example, if one of the service has a big event or major change, or the, they need expertise on the infrastructure, we provide the operation from our side as well. Also, because we are internal TAM, not like uh, supporting other outside customers, but inside like all in the Rakuten ecosystem, we understand the services and how uh, they interact with each other. So we understand customer needs, plus we know how the service will interact with other uh, Rakuten services. So having this kind of knowledge is a plus when you are working as an internal 
technical account management. So this is our working uh, support system. So when a service uh, wants to deploy their product on one of the cloud platform uh, architecture, like infra, uh, we, discuss, we first try to understand what they are trying to achieve and what is their need. And we, first of all, support, uh, give them base support, like uh, constructing the environment for them, like even uh, it may be on VMs, it may be on the container. And we give them uh, our consultation and share uh, discussion on the architecture, like basic support we provide to them. Some of the teams, they have their own uh, SRE DevOps groups. So they may want to have only the base support and they want to, uh, when we provide the environment, they want to do the or operation part uh, themselves. But some cases they don't have this much human resource or uh, they don't have the expertise. So they want the service support as well. In that case, we understand how the product the service grows and what they need. So we uh, give support custom for that service. Also in some cases, they want to do their operation by themselves without waiting um, or like work more efficiently. So in that case, we sub, uh, provide them automation supported by Tom and they learn this knowledge and they can do their own operations by using our uh, automations. So it will be more efficient for both sides. So what is the difference between regular Tom? We support, like in previous presentations, you saw that there is Rakuten ecosystem with uh, 70 different services. So we, as Tom, we have knowledge base about different kinds of services. There are old uh, technology, like running on the VMs, and there are also uh, services that are working on the container system. So we understand what type of uh, necessity from the ap application and we provide solution according to their needs. So having the different uh, ex uh, experience and knowledge base is good for the customer so they can have better ec uh, experience with them. So we don't only consider the infra in the design process, but we also understand the application need and how much traffic they will get, what, what other services they will interact with. So we are proposing the best practice for the design. Also, uh, we provide the fail-safe environments for the in the case of infra failure. We have proactive support because we have we are working within the same group. So we are internal uh, Tom. We have the sense of ownership for each service. We are in Rakuten group and the products are also in Rakuten group. So we know the service and we uh, have, we acted as it's our own. And because of that, when there is, uh, when we are monitoring systems and when they are growing, we know what is going on with each service and we have we provide solutions even before the customer requires from that. Like we should uh, change this part like this in order to have this. So we get, get uh, go to them with our solutions without they ask to us. And every request and feedbacks, uh, we check them and we turn into products with other sections to, in the cloud platform department. And we discuss how we can automate it, how we can make it easier for the customers and services. One of the main responsibilities, maybe most of you know about Rakuten Superse, it is very high traffic uh, event at the start. And for that, there is huge amount of preparations before the event starts. So as Tom, we need to understand 
which kind of ser uh, which services will get high traffic and how we need how we can improve their stability and how they interact with each other within the ecosystem. So in the case of high load, which services will affect what and how we should improve our limits. So in this uh, event, we do lots of uh, load tests. We interact with different groups and teams, and it is a huge collaborative work uh, for preparing this uh, event. Also, not only before the event, during the event time, we provide 24 seven uh, support and every team works on their best effort for this event. In another case, we do troubleshooting. Uh, for example, one of the CAS, our Kubernetes clusters, become unresponsive once uh, one time, and we check the how it is uh, what is impacted first. So uh, we can inform all the services, and we can notice to everyone. Uh, we understand what is the reason. Is it related to the cost? Is it related to network? And we communicate within the teams in the cloud platform department and, and work together. It's not only one team working on this case, but all departments try to solve and troubleshoot together. For in the case, if it is work, uh, doing having a long time for recovery, we can change our deployment to another region and we coordinate in each other. Like for example, we talked uh, before me, uh, they, there is a presentation about like how we can deploy to other region uh, quickly with using con container system. So we coordinate with other uh, teams and also with customer, what we can do for quick response in order to uh, go through this failure. So in, when you are working as Tom, what do you expect in Rakuten? You are part of the Rakuten ecosystem. So you can see lots of uh, services here and these are different services. So you have experience on the old technologies, you have experience on the new technologies and you need to learn about what is coming next. So you can provide the best uh, practices for your customers. And because you are working with 70 service, you need to understand the bigger picture, how each service affects each other. And it's like domino effects. So when you have problem in which service, what will affect how they interact with each other. So this kind of experience don't come in every company because there isn't this big uh, ecosystem that you work on. We need uh, speed, speed, speed is one of our shoe gear. Like we need to be agile. We need to react quick. We need to learn quick because we are in doing operations. We are doing support 24 seven. So we need to be agile uh, with each action. It is multinational organization. So you learn different cultures. You learn how to work with uh, different cultures and uh, you learn also how to work in different regions so we provide data uh, we provide deployments on different regions so in the case of uh, failures so there is so much communication going on and as Tom when you provide a solution, a design, you are making a difference because the performance of the service is also affected by the architecture design you propose. So it is not a significant, uh, insignificant job, but you know that you are making a difference and you are contribute, uh, contributing to this ecosystem a lot. And that's end of my presentation. Thank you for listening. Okay, thank you very much. So next we will uh, take a short break, but before that, please let me make a quick announcement about career information. Uh, maybe I should pin me. Then now here you can see a QR code for a casual interview. 
I will also post the link in the Zoom chat. Let me go, please access it. If you are interested in working with us, or at least if you want to have more technical conversation, please access the link and we will set up a casual interview with a Lactan engineer. And let me also share my screen here, this one. Here, yeah, this is a, a career information page. Today's speakers are all from Cloud Platform Department, CPD. So if you come to our career information page and input CPD, you can find a lot of questions. I will share this link too. If you find a position which suits you, for example, site reliability engineer, you can click it, then yeah, you can find more details, job description, and also the qualification and so on. You can also apply from here. Yeah, uh, thank you very much. There are always some questions about hiring. So I hope your questions are solved now. If you are interested in our services and culture, you can also visit our corporate website like this. Uh, so let me share the link as well. Please visit our website if you're interested. So that's it from me. Now let's take a break. Has everyone come back? It's time to start. So Ethan is here now. Next presenter is John Duck. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Okay, so please be ready for your presentation. Okay. Young Duck is a vice senior manager, data storage and processing section. He will be talk about talking about the data platform administration handling the 100 petabytes. Okay, so wait a sec. Uh, oh, you need to switch the screen. You can see my yes. screen? Okay. Yes. Okay, so thank you for your time today. Oh, uh, this is Lee. Uh, thank you for your listening today. And I know uh, you are tired uh, for listening to late time, but uh, please give us a little more time and patience. It will be very nice. Too. Okay, so uh, today my topic is uh, related with data platform in Rock Tank. So I have uh, I have no uh, today we will not touch too much about the technical part, but uh, uh, mainly focus on the scale of our platform and uh, what kind of challenges we have and so on. And if you have any if you want to have a more discussion on the technical part, please feel free to contact the organizer of this meetup and we can have one other session. Okay. About me, I've started uh, uh, 21, 21 years in Japan and uh, 10 years in the Rakuten. I started uh, uh, Rakuten career as a recommendation and developer and uh, provided and developed and provided uh, recommendation, hybrid recommendation in Rakuten. And uh, so I also I uh, worked with uh, big data uh, uh, history in Rakuten from the beginning. So today, as I already mentioned, uh, I would like to touch about uh, data in Rocktanks and uh, what kind of data and the characteristic in Rocktank and uh, uh, scale of data platform and the challenge on the administration and so on. So I always started uh, my presentation with this kind of information if it is related with the big data. So as you may know, data explosion uh, the trigger of data explosion, uh, so we call the big data as a buzzword. Actually, uh, actually it is triggered by the internet uh, originated by the federal government of the United States in 1960. 
So from uh, one of the research uh, in 2022, they uh, estimated the created data uh, from internet is almost 30 zettabyte, not petabyte, zettabyte is very tremendously big uh, data size. Then in the middle of that 80% is uh, unstructured data and 20% uh, is uh, structured data. So internet user in, at the worldwide level, uh, as you can see, in the 2019, almost 50% uh, of worldwide level uh, population are exposed to internet. Uh, particularly develop more developed world, as, as you can see, over 80% of uh, people are using the internet. Uh, particularly in Japan, uh, over 90% uh, are exposed to the internet, directly or indirectly, even the elderly uh, peoples, they are using the internet indirectly in their lifestyle. So now the internet is almost mandatory for our lifestyle and a very important uh, cultures uh, for our uh, uh, living. So in enormous environment, particularly in Rakuten, as you can see, many services over um, uh, 70 plus uh, business and uh, as, a, as far as I know, 1.0 billion uh, users are using Rakuten. Uh, many uh, services in the world. So it is very, very natural. Rakuten has a very diverse and uh, unique, exclusive data. And of course, the size of it is very uh, large scale. So it means that the Rakuten has a huge potential and the value uh, from the point of data science. So of course, uh, we have been uh, uh, collecting and uh, mining and uh, creating value for our customers. And also uh, the, uh, huge, uh, the huge data lake in Rakuten is waiting for many talented engineers so who can uh, uh, work with us and uh, uh, join uh, with our long journey for this data uh, field. So, to support this kind of big data traveler in Rakuten, uh, we are uh, providing some of the uh, data platform and the solution. Uh, for instance, Hadoop is very difficult in the world. Uh, we are providing the Hadoop cluster totally 80K core, 600 terabyte memory and uh, 150 petabyte disk. Uh, petabyte disk. And uh, it is uh, supporting many use cases of a data lake or data mart and uh, message, uh, message parallel processing and so on. Uh, Kafka cluster for streaming uh, streaming system. Uh, totally, we are providing 800 core, 20 te uh, terabyte memory, and uh, 4,500 topics for uh, users. Uh, usually, we are handling the millions of messages per sec in uh, normal date. During super sale, uh, more than two times uh, we are handling uh, uh, as a spike and so on. So as you expected, or as you may already have, uh, there are many challenges to keep the, this kind of uh, big data platform because a uh, huge data load on the system and uh, keeping system stable, keeping the performance is a very, very big challenge. So intentionally, I named those kinds of a system administrator as a big data platform administrator. So this uh, stack view is showing what kind of knowledge the big data or the other role of administrator is necessary to have and how deeply or how many knowledge of the information is necessary. So there are many uh, uh, players uh, to keep the system uh, stable and so on. So project or product managers, of course the customer is the main uh, player in our service and uh, middleware administrator, network administrator, infra server administrator, software developer, software system architecture, and so on. I think there are another uh, administrator uh, related with the uh, system. But uh, in the middle of the big data platform administrator need to know uh, from the low level to service level, uh, not the specialist level, but uh, at least the generali uh, generalizers uh, Mm, general level of uh, uh, engineers, but in the uh, particularly, of course, data platform part and uh, operation system is more necessary to have a special uh, knowledge on that. 
So, uh, big data platform administrator doesn't need to be a specialist for all of area, but the issue, uh, it is preferable to be in the position to coordinate and uh, collaborate with uh, uh, collaborate between the users uh, by supporting product or project managers, uh, particularly speaking, the communicator with users and collecting information or uh, get supporting the uh, uh, get supporting uh, from the many uh, administrator. And on top of that uh, information, big data platform administrator. Uh, start working on the summarizing, analyzing, and the figuring out uh, what is happening on the system, and uh, finally uh, figure out some the uh, root cause of the problem or uh, select the best way to go. Ah, before going next slide, of course, this uh, this two slide uh, it is uh, of course uh, from uh, my personal experience and opinion. So I don't have any intention to ignore other uh, opinion and so on. Just uh, please accept this uh, information. It is from my private and uh, personal opinion. So this is actual use case uh, about the HBase. Uh, as you may know, the HBase is the KVS uh, solution on top of Hadoop to support uh, key values towards uh, use case, particularly large set of data. So, uh, when there are some performance issue uh, reported by users, of course, uh, at first uh, may uh, a big data administrator might be looking at HBase because it is a performance issue of HBase. But actually, it is related with many things from the service level to low level. I summarize some of the uh, important points. Maybe this information is kind of the interest point from the point of HBase administrator, administrator if you are learning HBase. So for instance, uh, from service level, uh, we have to take a look at it. Uh, users uh, application designs and not gonna have uh, some hotspotting due to their low key design uh, mistake or something like that. Even though the HBase is very stable and so on. Or there are many configurations related with the HBase architecture itself. For instance, parallel seeking or short search uh, read or uh, queuing uh, QoS or scheduler. Uh, how to allocate uh, processing power to each uh, query from the users or hedge read depending on the underground HBase uh, 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 performance uh, or something like that. And uh, but uh, HBase is of course on top of Hadoop. It is strongly related with H HDFS. So we have to take a look at HDFS is running well or not. HBase performance is not a battle or something. And it is related with, of course, HBase is a Java application, exactly speaking. So we have to take a look at JVM uh, configuration, whether GC is working or not. And of course, Java is on top of server's OS system. So we have to take a look at OS configuration is properly uh, set uh, for our application. And also we have to take a look at hardware itself is uh, uh, matched with the use case of Hadoop or HBase and so on. Particularly the in case of Hadoop is also just a uh, mess better processing batch. So usually uh, latency is not so much issue, but in case of HBase, it is not, it is different. So we have to take a look at the hardware uh, also is good for HBase use case or not. So it is not, can be uh, investigated by one big data administrator, but the many domains, for instance, network engineers, uh, or server engineers, or expert of OS, or uh, somebody who implemented the user side application, all of, uh, uh, all of uh, players uh, should be uh, involved in this kind of investigation. And uh, as a result, the uh, big data platform administrator can be uh, can find out some of the best solution to go and uh, what kind of thing they have to improve. So, as I already mentioned, uh, big data areas, there are many challenges and uh, be a good big data platform administrator or data engineers, I think it is a very interesting career path. So, if you are interested in this kind of career path, so then the what kind of advantage you can have if you are joining Lactan for those kind of career paths? So 
as you, you already know, the Rockton is running many services and, and um, a huge, uh, huge scale of uh, uh, service or uh, system. So you can go through all of necessary domain for big data platform to get rich experience for big data. And also, not only from the point of a service provider, but also from the point of a service users, you can have uh, many experience uh, from the point of users for many use cases like recommendation, uh, segmentation, uh, you know, uh, machine learning, or just uh, KPI or event management or uh, user uh, event uh, tracking or something like that from the point of a user or big data platform. So if you are interested in this kind of area, I strongly recommend to uh, take a look at the uh, uh, chance from the rock tank. Uh, so it's gonna be very helpful for your career path. And also, if you have any uh, question on our system, please feel free to contact our organizer and uh, we can have another session. Uh, that's all from me. Uh, I'll take over, Ayana. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so uh, earlier than planned, but next, let's move on to the panel discussions based on your questions. You can still input your questions in the slide, too. So let me share the link again. Please input any comment, any questions not related to panel discussion is also okay. Uh, not, uh, I mean, not related to uh, presentation is okay. Anything about work then, about infrastructure uh, that we can answer, we would like to try to answer it. So let's see the questions here. Okay, now please turn on your microphone, presenters. You can jump in at any time. Then let's see the question together. The first question is, what do you think are the most important skills, both soft skills and technical skills? Uh, one needs to have a successful career in CPD, in our department, Cloud Plat Home Department. So who will answer the first? I will start. Thank so, you. So for soft skills, um, listening uh, and sharing ideas, I always find uh, a key thing. and. Uh, for technical skills, uh, logical thought, logic, uh, and being able to provide clear logical answers as to things. Uh, it might sound basic, but these are probably the most paramount things uh, I feel uh, to have a successful career, not just at Rakuten, but anywhere in the world. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah, um, being always clear and concise is a very a uh, good thing. Thank you very much. I would like to hear one or two more. I can share. Thank you. Go ahead. For soft skills, I think uh, trying to improve yourself in your career is very important because we talked, all of us talked that technology is changing and we are trying to keep up and go forward. So you need to be eager to learn new things and how to use it and also looking at bigger picture is much important because you saw from the products and presentations we support large uh, ecosystem so we need to understand and see how things work clearly i think technical skills like it is according to your expertise it changes like if you are applying for junior position you will have to know you need to know some basic stuff but if it is junior position you will learn in hands-on as well so i think soft skills and having ambition is more important oh, when you nice. are buying a career in cpd yes i agree yeah <laughs> already in cpd are always learning and improving their skills, so maybe ambition is the most important part. 
Okay. Uh, does anyone want to add more? Oh, yes. Yes, please. So, uh, same as Lakuten, there are 25 years histories in our mm. services also. So, some service the architecture is a bit of legacy. So, soft skill, we should respect that legacy application also. Mm. Yeah, don't this the application since it uh, keep our service running and make profit also. In, on the other hand, we need to think how to modernize the services also. So need both skill, uh, legacy mm. application, legacy service skill and modern service. Need to know both of them. Okay, thank you very much. Can I go to the next one or if anyone wants to add more? Okay, then let's go to the next one. Would you would you, would you like to know how to maintain high availability of infrastructure in the country of natural disasters? Mm, good question. It's a very good question. That one. Mm, it's embarrassing. Um, it's very important. So yes, I agree. Japan is a country of many many natural disasters. Um, in many cases. Uh, it comes down to breaking down the problem as you don't put all your eggs in one basket. So to maintain high availability, you don't want to put it, all your system, all your servers in one geolocation. In doing so, um, if there is, let's say, a big disruptive earthquake, um, you would knock down all your system. So what you would want to do, like with anything, you want to make sure you have your eggs in multiple baskets in multiple regions. And Rakuten's got nine data centers globally. Mm -hmm. So we make sure that we have all our services spread across uh, a geodiverse uh, entity so we can maintain high availability. But then on, on top of that, within Japan, um, a lot of buildings have got a lot of other safety mechanisms in place uh, in case big earthquakes occur uh, to actually uh, protect infrastructure in place. So it's, it's a multi-layered, multi-tiered approach uh, to provide this. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, is there anyone who wants to add comment? Uh, I think that this answer is good. Okay, let's go to the next one. How do you run infra operation 24 seven globally? I think I can explain mm -hmm. this. So in our organization, we have multiple layers of support. We have 24 seven teams that are monitoring the services and the environment, the platform, the 24 seven is in the name. And we have the engineering support team that are uh, one high level for supporting uh, in case of emergencies uh, to the systems. They are not uh, service-based uh, support, but generally a platform support and we have time dedicated to different services so we have three layers of uh, support in the 24 sub 7 support and if it is related to one of the environment infra then also the, those infra teams has their own uh, 24 7 rotations so I think it is going very smooth and fast. Yes, thank you. Is there anyone who wants to add? Okay. Okay, then let's go to the next one. Ah, sorry, I did it. Yeah, it comes back. Okay, let me read this one first. As a term, how does one maintain customer satisfaction worldwide 24 seven? Ah, almost similar question, but any additional comment? Can, can I go to the next? 
stories and let's go to the next one. Thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Your mission is to be the cloud infrastructure for all Lactin businesses. How far are you? How long do you think it will take? I can answer <laughs> this one again. So, <laughs> uh, so cloud infrastructure, it's like many things. It, I, I don't think will ever end. Like it's an ecosystem. So mm -hmm. you will always have infra, which you will need to LCM and remove. And you also always need to inject with a uh, new infrastructure on the way in. So it, it's like asking how long is a piece of string? In this case, I feel we will have an infinite uh, lifespan um, as long as uh, we want to uh, maintain uh, said infrastructure. So, um, and um, how far are we? I, I think we're in a good stable state. There's, it's hard to measure distance when distance is infinite. So uh, I can only <laughs> provide a relative position of where we might be. And I feel we're in a, a relatively good position. Yes. Thank you very much. Any additional comments? Okay, let's move on to the next. How to design to link and utilize the user actions from multiple systems, data science. Okay, so let me mm -hmm. answer on the question. So, so just generally speaking, so we can say this topic is a user linkage. So there are many ways uh, to do this one, but uh, from the point of data, we have to find out what data can be used for uniqueness, uh, figure out the uniqueness of users. I mean, identifying the users. It is up to the company's uh, master information or design structure. So based on that, uh, each service uh, who, uh, which will be used by one users, for instance, in case of Rakuten, uh, Rakuten Travel, Rakuten Ichiba, Rakuten, fin uh, Rakuten Bank, or there are many services, right? So it can be uh, utilized by the same users. So from those uh, users event for in each service, so data scientists, uh, before working on data scientists uh, do something, so event design, uh, should be should contain those kind of uh, some information about uniqueness. So, for instance, uh, many uh, service company have uh, their uh, user information like uh, ID and password or something. But uh, if the like uh, rock tanks, uh, uh, we uh, have only one the uh, integrated ID system, then the, it can be utilized. But I can, I'm, I'm not saying that we are using that one for this kind of linkage, but the generally speaking, or maybe, uh, you know, the in the world, generally used one is a cookie. So under the ground, the user, uh, whenever users uh, log on some of a service or open the some of a company's page, under the ground, the cookie is created and it can be used for uniqueness uh, identification or something like that. So. These days, uh, Doji Cookie is a uh, uh, hard issue from the point of uh, uh, personal information security. So many services, including Lactin, I think uh, when the cookie is created under the ground, then uh, it is showing some pop-up. Is it okay to create the cookie for your event uh, tracking or something like that? If you can see those kind of information, then maybe those company is utilizing your uniqueness information by your cookie for your uh, uh, user experience improvement by data science, uh, data analyzing and so on. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, then let's see the next one. If someone wants, wants to run and to have experience about hardware instead of software, where should we start? It isn't easy like learning software, I assume. This is spot on nowadays, I feel. Um, a, there's not very many things out there that would actually teach people uh, about hardware. So for me, actually, what I recommend with this is uh, starting 
uh, things at home, like building your own home computer. Mm. This is this is a really fun one that I recommend to people. Uh, even um, if 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 that's if you've done that and you want to learn more, start taking apart electronics that are broken in your house. Um, I like if the remote control stopped working, and even though you've replaced the batteries, open it up. If it's already broken, it's you're not going to break it anymore. If you open it, you, you you might fix it, and that's what I do. I actually open things up, and I see, and I go, "Hey, this is what's happened," and I try and fix it. And sometimes I fix it, and I save myself some money. And it, it's probably the best place to start uh, and have a journey on curiosity. And then there's also Electronic kits, uh, I've worked with them many times and you can actually order them on the internet nowadays. Um, and they will actually teach you things, uh, how to solder, how to read resistors, how to actually understand integrated circuits, so on. They, they're actually quite fun. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, let's go to the next one. I think your team is a global team. Is there anything you are trying to get the job done? Hmm. I think for this question, maybe some some of you can answer. Who will take first? Okay, then viewpoint ah, of the Jap Japanese. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Sometimes Japanese uh, don't share all mind, but uh, yeah, global team. Yeah, we should share our idea explicitly and uh, we should not expect others too much. Yeah, we should have enough communication is important, I think. Mm, great, thank you. Yeah, maybe this person is also Japanese because his, he or she has input. <laughs> input it in Japanese as well, translated. Hmm. But any other comment? I'd like to hear from non-Japanese perspective too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so maybe I can take over this. So Thank you. Now the uh, maybe we can consider two, two points of view. First mm -hmm. is uh, if you are working more human user communication or a communication with somebody uh, related with the negotiation or something like that, then maybe in global uh, more consideration on each uh, region's culture or country's culture might be very important. And in the middle of that, you have to think about which information should be open or which information should be not open due to it can give some the insulting to somebody or it can give some the loose, uh, loose, uh, loose, um, loss of a negotiation <laughs> chance or something like that. But uh, it is completely depending on the region, I think so. But so it, I think it is the most complicated part in case of those kinds of domain. But uh, in case of engineering domain, I think even though it is globalized, uh, global teams or not, it doesn't matter. I think every country is going to be same. When we do communication, regardless of country, the important point is uh, clearly share what we have to know each other to make a system. So that is why there are requirements definition. There is why uh, system definition and so on. And uh, usually if you are engineers, you know that one need for your system design and the implementation. To share those kind of information clearly by your sum of a media is the most important part. It's not related with the region, country and so on. Just uh, important, but the uh, one you have to consider uh, that is, as I already mentioned, uh, depending on the country, there are ways to show those kind of opinions uh, softly. So some country, mm -hmm. the way to share those kind of information, very aggressive, very strong way to communicate. But uh, in case of uh, Japan, yeah, I, I 21 years in Japan, the, usually the Japanese people is very soft and uh, something like, uh, 
own culture, so we say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, like... Not to mention too much. Uh, so, but uh, even though it is a, those, even though there are those kind of thing, in case of documentation or communication using the media, there are no different uh, as far as I know. So sharing those kind of information clearly by those kind of media, if you can do that, I think there are no issue, even though you are in the global change zone. Mm. Yeah, great opinion. Thank you. <laughs> so maybe I can add a little bit oh, more. Oh yes, please. So we we do have different cultures and they have different countries, and then there are different ways that people mm. speak and different ways people accept their communication. So Rakuten does uh, provide diversity cultural courses, and these are training courses, um, how to speak and how to accept people's other people's behavior. But in our department, this is involved a lot now, and then people have great communication. It's because people put the effort and people get to know each other, and that's where you get really good results. Good so we have a problem, people jump on the problem very quickly and fix the issue because they create a good network communication. And that's the point. If you can create a communication, if you're willing to work with other people, although they are miles away, um, you can get a, so much more gratitude and, and you can get a lot more work done and you can understand each other much better. So um, mm -hmm. we've seen a lot of improvement over the years because we've got more foreign people joining in, in the Japan branch. Um, and they were able. They were able to teach people how to communicate. Um, so at the moment, our, our environment is 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 very good. It's in a very good state, and you can learn a lot by joining us and understanding how to communicate with other countries. So it's a yes. good opportunity. <laughs> yes. Thank you very much. Okay, then let's go to the next one. How do you use AI accelerator in data center? I'll try and answer this one. Yes. Um, so something like this, maybe uh, how do you, is it how we manage an AI accelerator in a data center or how we maintain it? So I'll, I'll try and break down a few different answers here. It's, and because it is such a broad question here, I hope I can capture what they're looking for. So. Number one, uh, cooling is uh, key and paramount uh, for systems which are operating GPGPUs. Um, if you don't have enough cooling, um, you will not get uh, the results that you probably expect uh, from uh, said type of um, uh, pragmatic approach. But then when you're, and, and then other things you might be considering for AI accelerators in the data center, we have to network them together. So there's many different types of uh, networking. Uh, for us, we use InfiniBand uh, and NVLink, and then we uh, network uh, the, uh, the GPUs together via that, uh, uh, that link if a business unit or customer wishes to use it. Um, so I hope I could answer your question. I'm sorry, it's a broad question. Um, mm anyone else would like to chime in, I'm happy to also uh, support. Mm -hmm. Any additional comment? If you want to know more detail, you can ask more detailed question too. Okay, Lisa. Yep, so <laughs> Haji shared a approach here, how to manage the hardware level, right? So in case of a utilization level, so if it this is uh, mentioning the GPGPU, then the how to utilize the GPGPU from the point of uh, data science. Then the, there, are many, uh, there are some of it, for instance, uh, adding the GPGPU server in the Hadoop cluster, as I already introduced the last time. Uh, so providing that uh, GPGPU resource to many users as a shared way. Or uh, I think uh, there are some of a uh, solution from many vendors who are uh, uh, selling the GPGPU uh, using the VN uh, technology and so on. But uh, what I know is, uh, uh, I mean, as far as I know, there are no technology to share the one GPGPU resource uh, with many member, uh, many uh, application at the same time. For instance, in case of Java 
uh, it is possible to share the one CPU resource by multi-threading and so on as a deliverable language. But in case of GPGPU, it is not possible uh, sharing that the CPU or GPGPU uh, from the more than one process at the same time. So one job can use one GP, GPU. That is the common way to utilize it. It means that uh, if we introduce the too many GPGPU at the same at one time, if there are, uh, it is kind of nonsense, but uh, if uh, users are not learning really, really aggressive and the huge job, uh, even though GPGPU takes some hours or something like that, then the all of the job is going to be finished in one minute or something like that. And the utilization of a GPGPU, it's going to be uh, become to be less from the point of a cost or something like that. So when you utilize a GPGPU, there should be clear uh, use case and uh, need for that. Uh, that is an interesting point when you introduce and utilize GPGPU from the point of data science. Okay, thank you very much. So next one is a good question. What is the attraction of working at LACDEN? Who will take it? I'll start. <laughs> um, <laughs> number one, diversity. Um, yes. Being able to work with so many people of many different nations and not just within Japan, uh, globally as well. This is one really cool thing. Secondly, uh, especially in my role, uh, all the different types of infrastructure I get to deal with on a daily basis. Uh, for someone who deals with uh, hardware and infrastructure, uh, if you ever wish to uh, play with things in a much diverse manner and a much uh, large uh, scale as well, when I mean large scale, 30,000 plus servers is quite a lot. Uh, it is really cool to play with. Uh, and when I mean play, it's work, but still we have fun. Um, so there's some key things I'd like to share. Yes, thank you very much. Any additional points? Mm, yeah, so <laughs> as a working just a career based already the Haji mentioned many things and uh, very good benefit about uh, diversity and uh, multicultural environment and so on. Just, uh, and just as a human being <laughs> and uh, just a simple working environment, uh, I would like to really promote this uh, welfare. Whenever I talk about this, uh, my friends were so surprised. Wow, so something like that. So uh, Rakuten is providing the free breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Yes. It is a very, very big <laughs> one from the point of human, you know. <laughs> so we don't need to go outside. We can do everything in, uh, in the office and we can focus on uh, working really. So from time to time, it is very noisy to go out somewhere to do something. So everything is in the office to be uh, to be honest we don't need to go outside the office and we can save our money because uh, it's very good welfare and uh, uh, another one is the how can i say uh, diversity is making very good chance to have uh, many knowledge from many peoples so i mean it's the not only different country but also from young people to very senior engineers in Rakuten because Rakuten have a very long, uh, very long history. Uh, as the other uh, Takashi Sang mentioned, uh, as uh, Takashi Sang mentioned that there are legacy system from senior men, uh, engineers from old days or new system uh, from newcomers or young people or senior people, but uh, it makes very big. Uh, knowledge pools and knowledge asset in Rakuten. So it is a very uh, big advantage, I think so. So in case of me, as I already mentioned, I started uh, from the uh, big data developers. Of course, I have a different uh, career and uh, history in Korea before joining in Rakuten and uh, uh, when, uh, be in Japan. But uh, the reason why I can start the uh, big data career path is the uh, Rakuten has a uh, those kind of level of scale of service and the system. So 
For instance, uh, we cannot ask a company owner, hey, let's introduce Hadoop because uh, it is a very hot uh, spot or hot uh, topics uh, for data analysis or something. But if the company is very small, then the, there are no data to do something. It is possible to handle just one Python application in local PC. But the rock tank already have a bunch of data actually and the potential. So that is why we, I can start to do this kind of career path. My point is a rock tank, very interesting environment and, uh, from many point of view. Mm. Thank you very much. Any additional points? Yes. Yes, please. So there is many services and many department also. So mm -hmm. even though I joined Lactin as a new class and I have not moved company, but actually I moved department two times mm -hmm. since my interested area was changed. So there is many um, chances you can find the best department for now. And uh, even though your mind is changed, still there is a chance and there is uh, some other department might match with your next interest. Mm, yes, I thank you. We internally have open positions, and when you want to change your team, you can select from the open positions. That's also a good point, I guess. Thank you. Any additional? Shall we go to the next? Maybe we have more, but <laughs> let's go to the next one. Next one is, what have you been able to grow in your current job? Any idea? From me, it's not with what I've grown with myself, but what I've grown with uh, my teams and my groups mm -hmm. uh, in the section. So I have grown them up uh, and increased their skill set and broadened their knowledge and diversity by providing them multiple different perspectives on seeing a problem, uh, not just feeding them what the problem is, but showing them how to actually analyze a problem and see it in a different light. And also dealing with uh, tools and operations uh, in different ways, uh, because there's more than one way to uh, close out a problem. Uh, and it's all about what else can we do? How can we do this better? Um, that's what I feel I have been able to grow. And it's actually seeing people uh, mature around me has been incredible. Great. Thank you very much. How about others? I'd like to know your own experience as well. How about you, Nepal? Any experience? Uh, for me, I came as semi-experienced. So, mm -hmm. but when you work with an, in ecosystem, you learn like with the working with different technologies, different kind of uh, support, different services to support. So uh, you learn how to keep up what is required to be good in your job. Like if you stay in your same, uh, how can I say, same position, or if you don't have ambition to learn new things, uh, your job becomes uh, mm -hmm. very boring after a while and you don't have the same enjoy uh, from the work. So when I joined here, I noticed like my current knowledge, it is okay for when I apply here and when I start job here, but if I don't keep up, then I noticed that I won't be good at my job. And I think someone who is working in IT career, you need to always have the real ambition to keep going and learning more. So Rakuten taught me like, I need to improve myself always. Mm -hmm. Thank you, <laughs> great. Okay, we have about five more minutes. So let's go to the next one. Maybe we can cover all the questions. We have four more questions here. 
is there any mechanism to minimize the thrust radius to avoid um, service failure affecting others? Can you answer this question? There's a few ways. So mm -hmm. first of all is to make sure that when you define uh, your system or your service, uh, it has no reliance on another system or service directly. So if it is, if it breaks, it will only break itself. Uh, and you need to make sure when you do design that, you have something else that can fill in or foul over uh, for that to actually occur. So it, it's all about designing high availability in your own uh, design or designation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any additional? Okay. Bisang, go ahead. Uh, <clears throat> at the level of architecture, I can give some of the keywords. Uh, so for instance, in case of me, I'm always uh, keeping in mind to make system as uh, the, uh, to make our system following the one, sum of rule. So for instance, uh, the separation of the law or shared nothing. So it means that, uh, you know, the, if your system is shared nothing or uh, your sum of a service law has a very good uh, separation of your law and responsibility, then the, you can minimize or you can avoid the system, uh, your service system failure by the other service uh, failure and so on. But I'm positively thinking that uh, by those kind of uh, architecture, you can face some of the issue uh, from the point of system complexity or uh, more too much redundancy uh, from the point of, uh, uh, to, uh, sorry, to maintain your system or keep your system more available. But uh, if it is just a system level architecture, uh, there are nothing we can do if you have a hard dependency. For instance, uh, your system needs to get the data from the Oracle database to support your service uh, uh, data and so on, or user maintenance or something. If the Oracle is gone, you have nothing you can do. So in case of that, you have to always confirm your dependency system has a good high availability from the point of a service user. So uh, they, that is the two points I always uh, keep in mind when I design my system. Thank you very much. Okay, let me go to the next one. I would like to know how I can maximize my chances to be selected for a role in LinkedIn. Oh, any advice? <laughs> Maybe can I we can answer this. I think, uh, well, please check the career page and please mm. check carefully the experience and qualifications required. And anyway, you can, you can join our casual interview and you can uh, get some more advice from there as well. Mm. You can say that. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for your interest anyway. Uh, please read the description carefully and qualification especially. Mm. And please join our casual interview. Okay, next one is regarding the data platform. What kind of uh, da data ops are painful to the administration? Uh, maybe I have to answer on this question. Yes. Actually, mm -hmm. I'm not so familiar on the data ops. This is, I think, a very least word these days due to data product become to be important. So there are some of the open source solution or there are some of the commercial solution, but uh, just my quick glance of view and my quick impression, the difficulty of data ops is the, there are many logic of the data analysis. Uh, and uh, there are various types of data, uh, data scientists and uh, some user who want to do run that the logic on top of data platform. So, it is very hard to make managing the logic submission from the data analyzer or data scientist. And it is very hard to managing uh, data pipeline to meet their those uh, data utilizers uh, requirement. So particularly the big data platform, which have to be managed by this data uh, ops system 
is not so good for those kind of relationship because it is only focusing on the throughput and the performance sensor one, not so those kind of uh, communication between them. So that is why the Hadoop is uh, very popular in this uh, uh, field because it is providing very good uh, platform for analysis. But mm. so yeah, so for now, I think uh, it is in the mid, just started of evaluation, uh, evolution of this data ops. So if the, there are some good solution uh, which can be handled uh, very well, it's gonna be very nice. For instance, as a SAAS, uh, what is that? The uh, Treasure, I forgot the name of the company, Treasure, blah, blah, blah. And uh, some of uh, those kind of companies are providing uh, this kind of uh, interface and so on, and uh, submitting their data and uh, run, selecting some of uh, pre, uh, prepared the uh, logic or something like that. But it is for, I think, a uh, small scale of data size. Uh, in case of rocking level of a uh, huge data size, I'm a little bit doubting it is a uh, feasible or not to utilize it very well. <laughs> yeah. Yes, thank you very much. After the previous question, we got one more question about uh, hiring. Will you be able to accept an applicant without experience but willing to learn? I think it depends on the position. Uh, if uh, it says junior engineer or some junior position, of course we will accept it. So please, that's why please read carefully uh, for each instruction. Thank you. Okay, then this is the last question. What are your team's current job challenges and goals? I think some of you mentioned about it in your presentation, but if you want to add more comments for your presentation, please let us know. Anyone? You can say same things again as uh, the last answer. Go ahead. Mm, for big data platform, just a very simple, and I think this is a very tra traditional challenge and a very con very general challenge. Just uh, Cost versus uh, feature. <laughs> so, uh, saving more data, it means that uh, more hardware, you know, more cost for system. So it is uh, always a challenge is how we can show a good cost performance as much as possible when we design the system or when we introduce the new servers and so on. Uh, it is always a uh, challenge we have to uh, face and reject. And uh, another one is how we can uh, make sure that uh, data is safe or not, because uh, hardware is always gone. That uh, it it has a life cycle. So life cycle management is a very big uh, hard issue. I think it is not only issue on in our lockdown, uh, but also the other company also uh, where the storing the huge data. I think so. So uh, I'm always uh, giving many requests to infra team, including Haji. I know it is very <laughs> high, uh, big challenge, but uh, we are always communicating with the uh, infra teams uh, for this kind of thing. Yeah. Thank you. Any additional comment? I'll, I'll lead on from where um, we were. So. Yes, life cycle management is always one of the most fun things and it doesn't end. Life cycle management is, is continuous. So, and it's just only one of the challenges. There's many challenges we have every day. Um, and I feel it's about driving them to excellence is the even greater challenge. Taking something and going the next level higher uh, pushing it beyond what it can do or what uh, it was in, in initially designed for, being able to uh, take a product and polish it to a diamond. Uh, there's many challenges, so it's 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 always fun. Um, and it, it's what drives us every day, I feel. Okay, thank you very much. I actually like 
to ask everyone, but uh, unfortunately, it is about time to finish, but I'm happy to answer all the questions. Thank you very much for uh, giving us a lot of questions. Okay, so uh, before closing, I uh, would like you to answer the survey. So please let me uh, post it again in the Zoom chat. And please uh, take a survey. It takes a few minutes. We will keep organizing this kind of meetup. So please let us know what kind of topics you want to hear the next. Okay, thank you very much. And actually today we have our department head. So I would like to ask him a comment as a closing of this event. Yoshida-san, general manager of Cloud Platform Department. Please give us a closing comment. Yes, thank you, Anna Sam. Uh, do you hear me okay? Yes. All right. Uh, thank you very much uh, for joining this second uh, Rakuten Developers Meetup. And I hope you all enjoyed the, all the presentations. And I found uh, the panel discussion today uh, was really, very good. And thank you very much for asking uh, good questions. I would just try to answer one of the questions ah, yes, from my end. So the, there was a question asking about how to, what is the important soft or technical skill? The first question. Mm -hmm. So I think in Rack 10, uh, the ability to uh, collaboratively problem solving uh, is very, very important. We are the big team, we are the diversified. So the doing collaboration itself uh, is a key to solve any type of problem. And of course, kind of it requires utilizing your technical uh, expertise. But the, as long as you keep finding or kind of somebody will put a problem in front of you. And if you keep solving those problems, then the problem becomes uh, bigger or kind of more complex and you will gain more experiences and your ability uh, goes up. So the, yeah, from my point of view, person who can uh, do the problem solving in a collaborative manner uh, would be very promising. And yeah, again, uh, thank you very much for uh, joining this. And I hope uh, this event uh, gave you uh, some good insight about Rakuten or what CPD does uh, in this company. And I hope you got interested in, and if you feel even a little bit, kind of, you may want to join uh, Rakuten CPD, uh, then uh, please, please uh, register to the casual interview. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I posted a link to the casual interview again in the Zoom chat. So please apply if you are interested. And also posted a hiring information. Please check the detail after this meetup. Okay, then let's close this meetup today. Thank you again for coming today. Thank you for joining. See you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you so much.